Okay, so I'm going to show you how to hack one of these guys to control mains power devices uh, straight from your own home automation server using MQTT or whatever else you want. Um, these are really neat little devices. They have a ESP8266 microcontroller in, um, as well as a little relay, and a power supply to control themselves from mains. And they cost um, around the $5. It's, it's really, really nothing at all. So to get in, all you have to do is ping these things off, um, which often will just fall off once they're undone. You need your Lego fingernails here, and just get between the, um, the two sides here, start at one corner, and just drag along. And then you can just kind of pull it open. And you have the circuit board. Um, in here, you have uh, an ESP8266 on the back. You have a bunch of power supply stuff, and you have a relay that can turn stuff on and off. Um, Normally these come with um, just holes in here, but I've soldered on five pins um, just to make this a little bit easier. I've also got a, a USB TTL converter. So these are really cheap things to get off eBay. It converts USB to a serial connection that we can use to program this device. Um, it's, I've got a little jumper wire here with four of the five wires connected. Um, and there's power up here, you've got a serial transmit and receive, and you've got ground there. Um, and the important thing is to make sure that you connect 3.3 volts to 3.3 and not 5 volts. So to get this going, all you need to do is connect the, um, the USB to serial converter up. Uh, you connect it up this way. So making sure that um, this pin, the one that's nearest all of these, isn't connected. Um, but otherwise you're fine. So now what you want to do is you want to connect um, this to USB while holding down this button here. There's no risk of shock at the moment because you're obviously not connected to mains at all. So press the button down and I'll plug it into USB. And you won't actually see anything happening apart from the LED on this lighting up. So now we need to think about some software. Uh, so. First off, we need uh, ESP tool, the tool to program it. And if you just Google for ESP tool, you'll find this URL. Um, you need to have Git installed, or you can actually click download and download a zip file. But if you've got Git, it's nice and easy. You, um, you take this URL, you say git clone URL, and you wait for it to drag in all the, um, all the stuff. While it's doing that, you want to get Esprino for the ESP8266. Now there's a bunch of information here and also if you go to get Esprino and download firmware, you can download it directly. But what I'm gonna do is just go straight into the binaries folder and pull out the latest ESP8266 combined um, that's here. And you don't want the four meg combined because you actually only have a one megabyte part in, um, in this particular S on off board. So you just save link as, and we'll stick that in the ESP tool. So now um, we have ESP tool, hopefully. Uh, we just need to go in and we'll run it. Um, you need Python installed. Um, there are actually better flashing tools available, um, especially for Windows. So just have a quick Google and see what you need. Um, but on ESP tool, you say minus minus port, you give it the port name of the, um, of the device. Uh, the USB to serial converter and you just say write flash to naught and you use the um, Esprino combined file and now you just wait for it to write it. Now you can upload Esprino as many different parts and put them all in the right places um, but flashing the combined file is nice and easy because you just overwrite absolutely everything and it just works. Okay, and now we're done. Um, so all we have to do is reset this by unplugging it from USB and plugging it back in. So I'll do that now. And now you want to um, connect to the, um, to the S on off device with the S3 no IDE. So there's a lot of information online about getting the IDE set up. Um, but if you go to settings once it's set up and you make sure the communication support is set to 115200 because ESP8266 is different to every other device um, with the Esprino setup. It just has to use that. Once you've got that, you click connect, 
choose your USB device and you're in. If you type something, um, it will be executed on the device and the result will be returned. Um, so now let's upload some code to, um, uh, to make this work. Uh, this will be linked in the YouTube description, but we've got um, the Wi-Fi name you need here, the Wi-Fi password here, um, and the MQTT host, which we set up in the previous video. And this is also the um, the path name of your device on MQTT. Again, we're, we're using the same path name as we used in the previous video, but you'd want each device on your network to have a different path name. Um, these are the pins for the, um, the built-in peripherals, like the button here, the LED here, and the relay there. So if we, um, if we just click Upload to upload this, um, it will take quite a while on the ESP8266, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, but yeah, once this is done, um, it won't load automatically. You'll need to type on in it to get it to go. Um, same as before. Um, once it's going um, and it's all in RAM and you're happy with it, you can just type save and everything will be great. But for now, we just want to leave it as it is. So uh, we'll type on in it to start it off. Say connecting to Wi-Fi. Uh, hopefully it'll say successfully connected in a second. Um, on ESP8266, it's a slightly different order you need to do things. Um, but uh, but yeah, this, um, this still works and you're connected to MQTT. So now you're connected, it's, um, it's listening for anything beginning with the path, um, which is my device. So if I go back to the, um, our tools that we had here and I use MQTT publish um, and I send it to the Raspberry Pi and I set the topic to my device slash set and I set the message to one, we should see that um, there's a little click and the LEDs lit up, which unfortunately you can't quite see. There you go. Um, and if I set it to naught, you'll see it appearing and it'll go off. Um, so yeah, this is all like really nice and easy and we can set it up with the Raspberry Pi as before. So if I go back to our, um, our web browser and we go to um, the Raspberry Pi, which had Node Red running on it. Just Raspberry Pi colon 1880 um, will, will do it for you. And uh, we'll turn it on and off and we'll add a gauge. So what we want is two buttons, one for on, one for off. And we're gonna want like a, a gauge. Uh, and then we'll disconnect these up to MQTT. So we want MQTT to go to the gauge and we want those two to go to MQTT. And again, we just go in here, we set this to on and set the payload to one. Set this to uh, payload to naught and that to off. And then we want to um, make sure we're looking at the correct thing. So we want my device slash and we actually want status on here. And this one, we want my device slash set. So Node Red isn't, um, you know, you can use it for just plumbing these things together. Uh, okay, we need to confirm that. So we just need to write, um, I think we just need to have that between North and one. Uh, and we'll just rename that. Okay, we can deploy it. Um, so with Node Red, you can do a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, you can send stuff via TCP IP, you can play sound, um, do things on the serial port. In fact, you can even on the Raspberry Pi, um, obviously you can do tweets and emails and things. Um, you can actually um, control the general purpose IO that's on the Raspberry Pi itself. So you can even do fun things with that. So we've got this, we go to the UI, uh, which is just same URL forward slash UI. And we've got these things. So if I go here, um, I'll cover the light up a bit so you can see it a bit better. Turn it on and the gauge goes and turn it off. And in the same way we covered last time, we can we can go both ways. In fact, we can we can do one better. We can execute arbitrary JavaScript code on this device if we really want to. 
So um, for instance, if I add a new topic here, path slash eval, um, and then I just put in, uh, where did we have it? MQTT publish. And I'll make that say response. And I'll have it the response of evaluating uh, whatever we put into the message. And maybe just to make sure that we don't completely mess things up, um, we'll put this in a little wrapper so that if there are any exceptions, we can um, we can report them. Okay, and then we'll we'll stick the exception in there. And that's it. Uh, if I update this, uh, we will hopefully now have a val in here. So if I go back to um, to this tool that we had here, we were listening for everything we sent to the device here. Um, but if I do my device slash eval, and I don't know, let's just um, ask it what the value of the button is. So we'll see on here, it's it said it's got that value and the response was true and the response will be there. Um, if I press the button down, oops, and then I do it again, we'll see that the response is now false. So um, you can actually, you can almost remotely reprogram this device uh, via MQTT if you wanted. There are huge amounts of different things you can do with it. So the next step then is um, how do you make this just keep working? And um, because at the moment everything's in RAM, that easy, you just click the upload button, it will go through all that process again. But this, um, because we've messed with this at the moment, um, we've already connected and we're doing things in the background. Um, what we'll actually do is just re-upload this, get it completely fresh, and then we can just type save on the left-hand side and that will save everything to flash. Now you get different versions of the firmware for different ESP 866s with um, different amounts of memory in. Um, this one isn't using, it's only using the very first half of the memory, unfortunately. So the first time it tries to write it will fail because it had your command history in it. But um, you know, it'll soon realize it can delete the command history and it'll try to try again. Um, and so now we're, we're completely sorted. Um, it's connecting, everything's still working as before. If I go back to the UI, I can turn it on and I can turn it off. Um, and if you just uh, attach power to this as, um, as you'd normally wire it up, uh, as the S on off documentation says, um, you can now turn mains devices on and off from this. Um, so you can put a bunch of these around your house and use them for all kinds of different things. Um, and that's it. So to put it back together, uh, obviously all you have to do, pull that off um, and then put the cover on. The only gotcha is um, getting that very long button through the hole. Uh, and if you leave it on from that angle, you can generally get it in. Uh, you just have to offer it up and mess it around a bit. There you go. Uh, and that's in, I'm ready to go. An Esprino powered um, mains powered switch. Thanks for watching.